Hello Bass family and welcome to Everything Bass. Today I'm doing uh, a video using how to use minor pentatonic patterns to extend the fingerboard. And this is really important. Um, I did a similar one on major pentatonic patterns and you can find that by just going to my YouTube channel, look through the videos and you'll see major pentatonic patterns. Um, what the concept is, if you haven't watched that one, uh, is if you can take one pattern like uh, the root uh, pattern of a, of a simple scale, play the full position. There's ways to, to memorize the, the patterns, the same notes and how they progress up the fingerboard so you're not limited to that one position playing. And some of us might only be playing in one octave, so even just going to full position, you get more musicality out of it. Now, I will tell you, if you are familiar with the, the major scale patterns, and there's five of them, uh, major pentatonic uh, scale patterns, then these patterns might look familiar to you, and that's because they're related. Um, just as we have relative minors, you know, C Ionian is relative to A Aeolian, um, the same thing occurs here. And so to kind of not be sneaky about it at all, I use the relative minor for the unit that I did with the major pentatonics. The major pentatonic patterns is in G major, I'm using E minor pentatonic here. It's the same notes, so you're gonna recognize certain patterns but the tonic is different, and uh, I hope I'm not confusing you that. So let's just kind of get into it, uh, and you know, hopefully you'll see what I mean. Uh, for Patreon subscribers, it, I definitely believe it'll be helpful for you to go become a Patreon subscriber, and if you have not already, and download um, the uh, PDF that's on the post. Each each video has a post, and this and the posts are always the title of the video. I want to make it very simple for you to do that to get to it. Find that, um, in this case, it'll be uh, minor pentatonic patterns. Find that one, download the PDF, and then you'll be able to visually see it. I, I actually do a neck diagram and show how the patterns interlink, and I think it's very helpful on something like this. So let's get into it. So E minor pentatonic, those of you who might have learned the one octave, using the open E, it looks like this. It's the open E, the B on the third fret, then it's the open A, the B, the open D, and the E. So that's the one octave pattern two notes on every string. Now the full position, we can take this G that's low, move it up an octave and use the open G so we can add that note because if, it, if a G is good here, it's gonna be good up there too. And then we add in the A because we have the open A is in the pattern, we're adding the A an octave higher. So the full pattern is, I'm gonna count frets now, it's open three, open two, open two, open two. So just as in the other unit, what if I take these notes down here, the open E, the A, the D, and the G, and I move them up on the fingerboard? I, now I have the same notes of the E minor pentatonic, but starting on the, on the third, the minor third, or the second note of the scale. So here we go, I'm gonna play this. So it's the same notes. Now if you listen, just listen to what I'm playing, you'll notice that I'm not adding any new notes and I'm not taking out notes. Here's the E minor in the uh, root position. Now here's built off the minor third. Same notes, same notes. Now I can keep going. Now if I go here, using the same notes that are in E minor pentatonic, it looks like this. It'd be fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, fourth fret, seventh fret. So. And then I move up here and it's going to be uh, I'm going to play this distance. Now, if you remember from the uh, Understanding Intervals video, this is a minor third distance. I'm playing a root, and I go up three frets, and I'm playing this note. Or not, I shouldn't say a root. I'm playing a note. So that's a minor third interval. And I do the same thing on this string. Then I do a whole step and a whole step. And here's the E minor pentatonic right here, playing off this E. I'm just adding these notes. Just adding those two notes below really expand what you can do musically as a bass player, getting out of that one octave box. The one octave box is great for you when you're first learning a scale, but as quickly as you can, you're gonna to wanna to explore where those notes are elsewhere. And the first step is just getting the full pattern down. So we just did this pattern. And the last pattern is built off the seventh note of the E minor pentatonic scale, which is the D. So we have this D on the 10th fret. We go 10, 12, nine, I'm, I'm sorry, 10, 12, 10, 10, 12, nine, 12, nine, 12. Boy, this old boy sometimes the fret counting's rough on me, uh, so I apologize for that. So we have these patterns. Now, what, how, how do you use them? What do you, you know, what value do they have to you as a player? 
Well, since they're all the same notes as the E minor pentatonic, you can use them anytime you use an E minor, uh, you're playing over E minor chord, E minor seven chord. Um, and it gets you where you can be a little more free. I'll give you an example. Let's just take the first two patterns. Here's the root pattern. And the pattern built off the minor third. Sorry. So if I'm playing a, a bass line, and I want to play it like, I can go up here. I can, you know. So I've been com combined the notes in that pattern with the notes in this pattern. And it's given me this much room to play on the fingerboard instead of just that one octave. Um, similarly, you know, this pattern is kind of cool because it's whole step, whole step, whole step, and then a minor third. So maybe I'm playing down here. That's where these patterns can break you out of just playing in one area and get you where you're more fluid and using the scale over the entire fingerboard. Now you'll notice when I stopped, I stopped here on playing off of the D, which is the minor 7 of the E minor pentatonic um, scale. But if I go up to the E, it just starts all over again. G. All the patterns always link in the same order, so once you learn the five patterns, they just repeat over and over again, and you literally can play a scale off the entire fingerboard. This really opened tons of doors for me musically. It just it, it, it freed me up to be a little more expressive. Um, in future videos, I'll show you kind of neat ways to, to look at these patterns, but I don't want to do them today, because again, if you remember from the earlier videos, or if you haven't watched them, there's a thing I'm worried about called dilution. Dilution is trying to cover too many topics in one sitting. These videos, I, I do my best to keep them as a single topic. E minor pentatonic patterns up the fingerboard. And that's it. So you can just practice those. And I don't try to throw in a bunch of other stuff because that could uh, dilute the material and make it easy to confuse. Maybe things you don't memorize as deeply. So just focus on these five patterns. Uh, as with the major pentatonic patterns, just take one pattern at a time. Just take one pattern, get that down. Next day you sit down and practice, take, carve out like 10 minutes, work out the second pattern, but include it with the first pattern because you don't want the first thing you learn to slowly atrophy away. Every time you add a new pattern, work it into the patterns you've already worked until you have all five down. Um, if you have any questions about this, if I haven't been clear enough, uh, just uh, mention down in the comments. I get notified no matter where I am on the planet um, whenever someone makes a comment. I will only respond during weekdays uh, in the late afternoon to evening and on weekends all day long, all night long, um, just because I don't want to uh, disrespect my employer by doing it during my normal work hours. So I do it after hours during the weekdays. Um, and of course you can email me at dtitus at daletitus.com. So let's move on to uh, our encore item and uh, this is an encore item which I actually had in vinyl for many years then the vinyl went bye-bye um, and then I had a cassette and I don't know where that cassette is so I downloaded it on iTunes uh, when that was a viable option and um, so I, I don't have a thing to show you today but I will pop up the album cover so you can see it and it's for Iron Maiden Killers um, Iron Maiden was a very, is a very important band to me being here in front of you today. And what I mean by that is I was probably the world's worst heavy metal guitar player ever in the um, early to mid 80s. I was in a band in high school and I could play fairly decent rhythm, but even then it was mostly power chords and um, could never play a solo to save my life. And uh, we had a gig, and a week before the gig, our bass player left the band, um, and so we had two guitar players, me and my best, another one of my best friends, and so I just said, I'll play bass. So I went and bought a bass, and that night I came home, put on my record of Iron Maiden Killers, just to see kind of could I do it, and I was amazed how naturally I was able to hear the bass part, and I started playing the parts. And I, I think I played for about six hours that night. And I was actually playing a lot of the songs. Probably not perfectly, but really close, and much closer than I did on guitar. 
And that's what gave me this thought that, man, I think the bass is my instrument. I, you know, initially I got the bass just to get us through the gig and I was going to go back to being the world's worst guitar player uh, because the position was available. Um, but then I was like, no, I think this is it. And from there, it was like all these dominoes started falling where I started getting other albums and I could hear the bass and I could figure it out. I could use my ear and figure it out. I was self-taught. Um, and so that was really what got me set on my path. Steve Harris is an amazing bass player. Those of you who know the band, you're probably just nodding. Yeah, he's amazing. If you haven't checked it out, maybe the album covers have scared you or you think that, you know, there's a lot of press about, the, oh, they're these or this guys or these guys or this song or they're evil. They're not evil. Um, they, uh, just like Shakespeare wrote about evil people, but Shakespeare wasn't evil, they write some songs about some uh, dark content, but it's always hopeful and it's always, um, uh, I think, presented in a really great way. Uh, this band is amazing and I have... I believe every album they've ever done. I need to check on that. I might have to be spending some more money soon. But uh, Steve Harris, you can hear his bass parts really clearly. Um, he's not, uh, like he doesn't fall into like traditional metal kind of bass lines. He does stuff that at the time no one had done. Such powerful players, uh, yet also has these really cool runs. Uh, Killers has a time, I could sit here for hours and you know eat up all your evening here if you're watching in the night. Uh, talking about every song and what it's meant to me, but just check it out. Uh, if you've never checked them out, for sure, you know for sure it's someone you should listen to. Uh, just you know, find them out and and give them a listen to. Listen to the bass parts. Listen to what Steve Harris is doing. And I think a really great starting spot is Killers. Um, I think he wrote some of the most iconic bass lines on on Killers. Wrathchild, Murders in the Room Org. I mean, I could just go on and on. So. Today we are covering minor pentatonic patterns and how you can link them together to play all over the fingerboard easily and the Encore item, Iron Maiden Killers. What a great, great album. I'm definitely listening to it as soon as I get done today. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below or email me directly at dtyus at daletyus.com. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the little thumbs up like um, and uh, subscribe. It really means so much to me. I wish you guys could see when uh, I get the notifications another bass player subscribed to the channel. It's, it really makes my day. And it allows you, if you hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, it allows you to be notified every time I post videos. Uh, I plan on posting, I don't know, eight to 10 videos every weekend um, for years. So if you're always looking for new content, you're, maybe you've hit a plateau in your practice, um, check these out, go through, work them out. I will tell you that for Patreon subscribers, once I get a certain number of videos together, I'm gonna to start putting, if you will, a playlist of videos and how I would attack practice, um, you know, starting with like a good warm up, something where it you know, covers learning your fingerboard, uh, scales, arpeggios, things like that. So if, you're, you know, if you don't have access to a private instructor, it doesn't fit your time schedules, doesn't fit your budget, um, for a low subscription fee, you'll be able to actually take lessons with me and just go through the videos, use me as a resource, of course. Uh, I love this. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, I'm, I really love my bass family and I appreciate the time you spend with me. And I will see you at the next video.